All right, well, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'll let Eva kick it off. Okay, so uh, my name is Eva Marie Cole. I'm Chair of Advocacy and Awareness in Tri-State Chapters Advisory Council, and I'm also Co-Chair of the Patient Advisory Board. I hold other positions, but for today's meeting, those are my top two. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm a patient advocate. Uh, I've been a survivor of the disease for 18 years, and uh, I look forward to sharing tips and get you on your way to getting proclamations and lighting up things teal in your state. Peggy? Um, I'm Peggy Collins. Most of you guys know me. I'm with the Upper Great Lakes chapter, the chair there, and also the chair for the CLC. Um, and I'm having fun working with all the chairs that are on the, the call right now. And I'm looking forward to really digging in and getting the proclamations and the light ups. Awesome. Thank you all. Yeah. Um, Karen Anatrello, Manager of Advocacy and Support at the Foundation. And again, thank you all for taking the time to be here today. Okay, um, so just a quick disclaimer, uh, the National Scleroderma Foundation in no way endorses any drugs, treatments, clinical trials, or studies referenced in the session, even though we're not referencing any drugs in the session. Um, Information is provided to keep the community informed. Um, and then therefore, it's strongly recommend that all drugs and treatments be discussed with your healthcare provider for proper evaluation and treatment. And then of course, we always wanna lead with our mission to advance medical research, to promote, to promote disease awareness, to provide support and education to people with scleroderma, their families and their support. So we're gonna to touch on the theme um, for Awareness Month. It's going to be Scleroderma Matters. So with a renewed focus on providing hope to those living with scleroderma, the National Scleroderma Foundation wants to reinforce the point that scleroderma matters, whether you, you are a newly diagnosed individual, a longtime warrior, a loved one or a friend, this disease and the people living with it matter. So we're gonna have this year, um, as you might imagine, is going to be Scleroderma Matters. And I forgot to mention, if anyone has questions at any time, you know, this is really informal, so pop right in or put it, put it in the chat, whatever works. Um, so now I'm gonna go over, um, I'm actually gonna have to stop sharing. So this, I'm going to show you our tracker. You might remember last year we had it um, tracked on the website with, um, it was a two-step process. So um, Peggy, Eva, and I really worked hard to make sure that um, it was a little easier this year and more user-friendly. So let me just stop for a moment, sec. So I'll just share our tracker. loaded. All right. Okay. So it's going to be a Google form. Um, so for each one, you'll um, track individually. So we're going to ask for your name, email, your chapter, the date of request. So say you submitted already for, excuse me, submitted already for a proclamation. So you can just put that there. Um, so we don't know if the, the uh, request was approved or declined yet. So you'll leave that blank. Name of each proclamation or light up. So for example, the ABC building, the address, city, state, contact information. Is there a celebration planned? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and then you can add your photos and light ups. And you can do that by, um, it's going to automatically uh, save your link for you. So then you can come back in and put your photos in and any other um, additional detail. Easy enough, any questions? I tested it out. It is actually more user-friendly than what we had last year yeah. or the year before. Um, 
So just, I saved a link, we made modifications to the form and I still was able to go back in, add the additional information. So it's so much more user-friendly. You just kind of have to remember after it gets approved to go back in, find your, and you get a confirmation email. So you could like flag all of them and go in one by one at the end and then add your photos. You know, we suggest a building alone. We suggest um, pictures with whoever shows up in front of the buildings and so forth. Anything that could be shared with our community or the general public overall. Perfect. Where is this link at? Oh, it will be um, linked in the um, in the PDF after we send it over to everyone afterwards. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me get back to sharing my screen. Okay, so we're going to start off with proclamations, and I'm going to do this little session. Um, I'm going to read the pages first and then go into detail about everything. Uh, so for proclamations, a proclamation is an official designation of an event. Proclamations are a great way to educate the public about a specific issue and bring attention to a cause. And our cause, of course, is scleroderma. It is an effective tool for gaining public recognition of your event because it carries the full support of key government officials in your state or community. Uh, you should sign as a constituent of that state, city, town, or village. Uh, right here is just a sample of the proclamation, which I'll go more into detail on the next page. But in order to receive a proclamation, you need to live in that area, in that town, city, state, uh, in order to request one. So this is a sample of the proclamation. Uh, it, it's general. It's June 2024, Scleroderma Awareness Month. Um, it's basically states, whereas addressing the complex health needs of people with scleroderma is important to the state of, you put your state in, and whereas comprehensive and coordinated healthcare services for people with scleroderma are critically important to achieving positive mm -hmm. patient outcomes, and whereas it's appropriate to recognize June as Scleroderma Awareness Month, and it's very Lori, sorry about that. <laughs> Whereas though public awareness, the state of whatever your state is, seeks to focus on the needs of people with scleroderma and the continuing improvement of services to those people and their families. And whereas the state <laughs> are encouraged to wear teal in June to support of scleroderma awareness and to participate in scleroderma awareness related events during the month of June. And whereas the state chapter through its collaboration with the National Scleroderma Foundation and other organizational partners seeks to raise awareness in our communities through support, education, and research toward finding a cure for scleroderma. And then it's signed off. Now, therefore, I, whoever is the governor or official of that state or city, do hereby proclaim June 2024 to be Scleroderma Awareness Month. So this is the basic form that you would submit to your politician. They usually copy it, put it on their special form paper and sign it and make it official. Uh, next slide, Karen. When you're submitting this proclamation, you also need to be able to provide a brief history of our organization. I'm not gonna read it all out. Um, you'll get a copy of it, but basically um, it shows how the foundation was formed, what our mission is, what the disease is about, how many people actually have the disease or approximately have the disease and uh, the rate age range and uh, that affects all types of uh, individuals from childhood to adulthood. Uh, and that would be submitted with your proclamation request. And we have it linked here at the bottom um, for a Google form. So you can just quickly copy, cut and paste. So um, proclamation requests uh, can be asked 
of any state or local governmental office. That includes the governor, the county executives, mayors, state legislatives, municipalities, counties, cities, or towns. Um, each city and county will have, oh, go back. <laughs> each city and county, excuse me, will have their own guidelines and procedures for signing proclamations. Uh, the easiest way to research your city or county guidelines is to look on its website, website and search for the term proclamation. Some of the largest cities and counties will have proclamation guidelines listed. Smaller cities and counties may provide contact information on the website to call or email for proclamation information. Um, in order to expedite the process, the following information is usually required when submitting a proclamation request. The draft text of the proclamation I just read in the preferred format, the purpose of the proclamation, which is June Awareness Month, the date when the proclamation is needed, the date or dates of the day, week, or month of the event to be proclaimed, you can request any which one you want. Um, some states um, will only give it for the day. And if there's an event attached to it, uh, some will give it for the whole month. Some you may not even hear from them and you'll have to follow up. But do a quick search in your Google search bar. Uh, some states actually have a proclamation form uh, in Tri-State, uh, New Jersey, and Connecticut both have forms, but New York State does not. Um, a brief his You have to include a brief history, which um, is that form with the link, which was on slide five, and the name and daytime telephone number or email address of the contact person. Um, the wheels of the government turn slowly. So be sure to begin the proclamation request at least two, three months in advance of your event date, or in some places even sooner, uh, you would find that detailed information on those websites. Uh, timing is key if you want to be able to have the proclamation announced at a city hall uh, or a city council meeting, county commissioner meeting but do not hesitate to follow up to check the status of your proclamation and upon doing so, offer to provide any additional information the official may need. And are we on the next slide, Karen? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry about We that. already talked about that. Yeah, you covered yeah. it. <laughs> okay, so there's two drafts of a proclamation. Um, there is a traditional and a modern version. They differ just in format. However, the purpose is the same and they are equally effective. While the traditional format is more frequently used, be sure to clarify which style is preferred with your local official prior to drafting your proclamation. Traditional proclamations begin with a series of statements where I read before, it says whereas and because in as much and since each clause states the problem or issue being addressed and is followed by a concluding phrase beginning with therefore, which specifically requests the support or the action we're requesting and we need. Modern proclamations are written in a letter format uh, be prepared to have an electronic version of the proclamation available. Most offices will print the proclamation on official letterhead or certificate pa paper. Therefore, sending them an elect electronic version uh, will be requested. And uh, let me just, I'm sorry about that. I have to make my screen full view right now. <laughs> Okay, so you could, uh, just a little bit about the proclamations. Um, one, pro uh, the word proclamation is the general term in some city, uh, small cities or towns or villages. They're called citations, except a citation. It's 
equally uh, relevant as a proclamation is. Um, a letter, I also have to stress that take a proclamation or a citation no matter what day. If he doesn't want to give it to you for June and he wants to give it to you for October, take it. It's still acknowledging our cause. Um, you can make an event out of it. Uh, you follow the guidelines that you were given as to whom and how many you can bring to the proclamation meeting or signing event. That also includes um, a meeting with at a town hall meeting or uh, going to your mayor's office or your elected, any type of elected official's office. Um, ask to pick up that proclamation in person, make it an event, meet them, take photos and use the hashtags to share that. Uh, notify your local paper or media outlets about the proclamation. Have the proclamation photo enlarged for display at a news conference or in a prominent public space. Send photos to your local newspapers. As with any media piece, demonstrate its importance to the media's audience by including local statistics. Don't forget to submit a photo via the Google phone and post on social media. Tag National Scleroderma Foundation with the hashtag Scleroderma Matters. Uh, in addition, um, if you're going to be making an event, we highly suggest that you send out a press release proclamation form. Uh, and we are in the process of finalizing it, and it will be attached to this PowerPoint and the recording in about a week or two. Uh, so hold up for that. And there will also be a press release for light ups. And when we talk about press releases, we're really talking about just your local news media, radio stations, um, even your um, local government officials, invite them to these events, uh, which Marilyn will speak more about in a couple of moments. And that's um, all I got. <laughs> so I think Karen is up next. Yeah. Um, any questions for Eva? Okay. Um, so as Eva said, make an event out of it. Um, she mentioned that some politici politici politicians won't go to a, an event unless it's uh, attached, or they won't go anywhere unless it's attached to an event. Um, so kind of make a big deal out of it. Um, so thank God for social media. Um, so you can find your local news anchors by um, Look, looking on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, you could send them a private message. Um, just let you let them know your cause and what you're looking to do. And perhaps they'll be so inclined to do kind of like a feel good story or share it at least on social media. Um, oops, sorry. Um, and now we're gonna uh, kick it over to Peggy to talk about how to light it teal. Okay, hi everybody. Um, in addition, I just want to say something real quick with the proclamations. If you go online, you can find um, a site that has drop down menus to find the state politicians or the politician in your county or anything like that. And we send that uh, to the people that are helping us out so that they don't have to do a long lookup for anything. I thought I'd put it all on a spreadsheet and that would have taken forever. So I saved those spoons for later on in the day. So now we're going to talk about how to light it up teal. And have you guys uh, seen, as some of us are new, um, where bridges or buildings have been lit up in different colors uh, within your area? And a lot of times people don't know what the color is for. They're just driving by and they say, oh, isn't that pretty? You know, so what we want to do when we do light ups is make sure that we get somebody in that area that can have signs up or something like that, almost like a picket line, um, letting people know what we're doing. So during Scleroderma Awareness Month in June, we will be trying to light up all across the US. Um, this is really to, to raise awareness about scleroderma, which we all know needs to happen. And we're using the hashtag this year of scleroderma matters. Now, We've been talking um, 
the mouse in my pocket and I you know Randy and I have been talking about how in June it takes longer for it to get dark and longer you know it's late people might see things but they're not going to necessarily stop you know to see what somebody's talking about at least when they're driving by when it's lighter um you know they can see us um but what we also want to do is make sure that as many people can see the light ups as possible so maybe even getting a light up in um may you know to kind of lead into june or something like that cuz any awareness is going to help out now step 1 is decide where you want to light it up teal there's so many different places and so many different things that you can really just use your imagination. Um, work out where you want, you know, kind of scope things out, see where you want it, and then find out who you need to contact to get that done. When people were telling me that we got buildings to light up teal, I'm like, did we have to supply all those light bulbs? And who, who did that, you know? I'm like, I'm not going and changing their light bulbs for them. Um, but, you know, this may sound obvious, but knowing who you're going to approach will keep you on track instead of just starting out aimlessly. And don't worry if it doesn't, um, or don't worry, it doesn't have to be like a major landmark. As long as people can see teal, that's what we're looking for. Now, some suggestions are town halls, town gazebos, uh, local shops and restaurants, outdoor lights. Um, you want to be creative and have fun. What we're talking about looking into doing is, especially with some of the small towns, get as many neighborhoods as you can to put the light in their outdoor porch light, or you can get uh, wraps for the lights. And just getting pictures of this because it's still something really um, to bring about awareness. And next slide. Okay, now contact the landmark you want to light it up, okay? Approach uh, the people there as early as possible um, so that um, there are other charity events that are trying to, you know, run and take up the space to, to get their information out. Um, a phone call is always the best way to start out. Um, you could also check the website of the landmark if there is one. Um, to find out who to send the email to or who to contact in general. Now, again, who are you gonna ask? It's gonna depend on the building. Excuse me, sorry, again. sorry, I have kids here. Guys, okay, sorry, that was unplanned. Um, with each landmark, it's going to be a little bit different. You're either going to contact customer service, operations department, publicity department, maybe even their marketing department. Uh, so don't be afraid to check into it ahead of time. And Marilyn, uh, no, not Marilyn. I'm wondering at this point, what are I some of more, the- I have one more thing to say, especially with buildings, you're actually looking for the property manager that is who makes the decisions on how to light buildings the property manager uh, some buildings will have forms online and some you'll have to email so you'll have to check that so that beautiful picture is the hemsley building i'm lucky there's a form i fill it out i call i send it in i don't have to look for anything more but it depends on the building as peggy said but there are some forms in some places Okay. Now, does anybody on the call, have you lit up something a little different and created a little bit more buzz? What did you get lit up and what, uh, how did you make it a, you know, an event, so to speak? I'm looking at you, Lucille. <laughs> Can you yeah, share the story of, of good tra one. traveling in, in a, in a van? <laughs> yes. I, I, everybody get in the van and we'll just go around town and make things teal and and it's very easy to do but one the one of our major buildings in cleveland is uh the the terminal tower great name right but um they only do it every other year so that's something you have to also with your larger buildings at least here kind of keep track of but we use stage lighting. Um, well, this is a Kleenex, but imagine it's teal and you just put it over the light and it just 
we'll light everything up teal. It can be on the ground. It can be on, it can be on in, anywhere. And um, yeah, we just found random spots to stop and hop out. And <laughs> Wasn't there stories of a Chinese fire drill too, stopping in the middle of the street, changing, changing your places in the car? Yeah, we usually leave the guys in the car and the girls, which at the time we didn't have any men on our committee, so we just would jump out of the van and get some pictures real fast and jump back in. And that, that way you don't have to pay for parking, over parking, over parking. So <laughs> we're thankful for our drivers. That's <laughs> Anybody the else? Great. The signs are great. Any signs. Other ways to make things teal, if especially if you have children or you know somebody who's in sports, ask them if they would wear teal socks while they're playing their sport or a pen or something. Um, just uh, local events, uh, if you can reach out to your local baseball team, if they're willing to do a light it up teal um, uh, awareness night. Uh, those are other options as well to raise awareness, bring the color in, and so forth. Uh, Deborah, you have Debbie? a question? Yeah. Um, another thing that we that I did was uh, when I went to Houston to see my hand surgeon, ironically, one of the nurses had our Houston Walk shirt on. And so all the T-shirts that we have left over, if we do from any of the walks, we give them to the, the doctors and their staff. And they'll wear it uh, in June for National Scleroderma Awareness Month. That's so right. that, uh, yeah, so that's another idea. We had our first uh, light up here in San Antonio, and we had the Alamo Dome lit up. This year, and it was really simple. Uh, actually, I have a, a, a niece, a great niece that works in that department. So you can utilize people that you know in certain, you know, parts of your of your town. And that was really easy to do. It was just a phone call and just giving them the numbers uh, that National provides for the color. And it was really simple. There was no form to fill out. It was just a matter of communication. So that was really easy. And it's kind of it's kind of scary uh, coming in and proclamations and light ups. You think, oh my gosh, you know, can I do this? It's really simple. It's really simple. So many great ideas. Uh, so many tools to work with such as this training. So those of you that are new, I kind of was intimidated when I first came in, but it's really easy peasy. It's really easy peasy. So it's just a matter of getting your feet wet, getting in there. And I don't really think we had any no's. I think everybody, once they learn about our story and know that we exist, their hearts just open. And it's really easy, you know, to make happen. So, yeah, last year was our first year to get something in San Antonio, and we look forward to getting more light-ups and more proclamations this year. So I just had to share that little tidbit. Great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have anything they want to share before we move on? Make signs. Lots of signs. <laughs> <laughs> Lucille had great signs. I kind of clipped your idea, but I... That's all I, right. I couldn't get the the publishing guy to get it done, so yep. I cut up cardboard, spray painted them teal, cut out the letters, and they came out actually pretty good, considering. But yeah, uh, another option is work with your civic association to have them help you uh, with proclamations or even light ups in your area. They're your they work for you. These these uh, local officials work for you. So don't be scared to go to them and say, I need help. I haven't heard. And, you know, do that. Uh, like one of my ideas, uh, I, I know it's not my idea, but, you know, for Veterans Day, they put up flags or they put up ribbons. I'm trying to work with my civic association to ask people to please put teal ribbons on their you know, poles or their porches or on their house to raise awareness of the disease. So hopefully I get a yay vote next month at the Civic Association meeting, but that's another option. Any way you can get it, 
you know, because people ask questions and I know Peggy, you know, when you're wearing teal, why, why are you wearing all this teal? Why is that teal? It's a conversation starter. You get to be able to share your story and tell people about scleroderma. Yeah, especially when you're wearing layer upon layer of teal and dancing in a tutu. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, so yeah. And if anybody needs teal clothes or where to get them, hit me up. <laughs> okay. All right, Karen, you want to go to the next uh, slide? All right. And then there's a step three. The landmark has to actually agree to this, you guys. So uh, what do you do now? Well, it's fan, you know, well done if you've gotten the agreement and we can move ahead. Make sure you have all the details of the best contact at the landmark um, just so that you can follow up and make sure they don't forget. Um, and you can also keep the details on file for next year to make it that much easier to go back and ask again. Also, don't forget to submit any of the photos that you get via the Google Doc form um, because we want to be able to show them on our um, on our individual Facebook, um, Instagram, websites, whatever. And uh, remember there, all the uh, chairs that are out there, we want to uh, show all of our stuff on all of our uh, media. So don't forget that. Um, and be sure to tag uh, the National uh, Scleroderma Foundation and hashtag Scleroderma Matters. And then Marilyn, this was how this was where you were going to tell us all about your mayor and how you made him feel good. Mm -hmm. so, oh, um, came across bad, and I'm sorry. I got the look over here. <laughs> so um, I, I want to start by saying that the Rochester Scleroderma Support Group, uh, we have partners. And so what I'd like to do is have uh, whoever's in charge of Zoom, uh, let me share screen, please. Go right ahead. Or do you want me to share mine, Marilyn? Uh, no. Okay. Let me, I think I can do this. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this one here, which is actually, can you see it okay? It's still, it's loading. still loading. loading. Okay. There you go. There we go. Okay, so currently I'm in the process of getting ready to um, put together the document for uh, Scleroderma Awareness Day as, as including uh, the Stepping Out to Cure Scleroderma Walk. So we always get two proclamations. Um, so we, some of our partners are our legislative officials. So Senator, um, uh, Congressman Joseph Morelli, our mayor, uh, our, our county executive office, our assemblyman for uh, New York, um, our, my councilman. And uh, also this year, we're going to be honoring uh, Assemblyman Demond uh, Meeks uh, for his work that he's doing in the community. Uh, we have some of the other partners are the health organizations in our community, uh, the Black uh, Physicians, Common Ground, and so on. Uh, some of the sorority groups, I'm just highlighting one because they really have been involved with us for the past, I'd say, almost 20 years. Each of these legislative officials, health organizations, and community groups are supporters of the Rochester Scleroderma Support Group. I'm going to stop sharing and... I'm going to ask Karen to pull up the document for the mayor. Uh, he was recognized last year for the work that he's doing in the Rochester community. Um, some of the health initiatives were leading in from COVID. A lot of people were having problems trying to uh, get fooding, health care, you name it, they were having problems getting it. So the mayor, uh, Mayor Evans, um, administrative, can't see it. Hopefully you guys can see it. Can you enlarge it a little bit, Karen? Yeah, let me give that a shot. <laughs> okay. Does anyone know how to do that from a website? If you can't, don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, basically, what, what this is, is a news release that went out from the mayor's office uh, in 2022, that was around the COVID time, and on there is identifying some of the work that the mayor was doing in our community. And so what we decided was to 
we meaning our, we have a planning committee here. And what we decided to do was acknowledge the mayor for the work that he's doing in the community relative to the health initiatives in our community. And I shared this with Eva. This is one of the ways that you can get an event established on World Scleroderma Awareness Day. This is done on World Scleroderma Awareness Day. So what we do here in Rochester is identify different agencies, individuals that are doing anything around health or education, and we um, send out a letter to them and let them know that they have been, uh, we're gonna recognize them on this particular day, which is June 29th at City Hall. A press release goes out from Tri-State or myself. Uh, in this case, City Hall, they did one as well to invite the public to come down to City Hall. So we had the lighting and we also had an opportunity to recognize the mayor for the work he's doing, but there were also two other organizations health uh, groups that were recognized as well. They were both uh, what we call uh, church ministries that focus on health in their congregants. So we wanted to recognize the health ministries in these two church organizations. And so it was the mayor and the two churches, uh, health ministries that were recognized. And we took pictures of them. Of course, the, the um, press was there uh, anywhere the mayor goes. The media goes. So we, we were lucky. Uh, but um, I think it was Eva that said, yeah, send out the press releases. And, you know, sometimes the media will show up and sometimes they won't. You, you know, it, it just happens that way if they're really busy. But like I said, in this case, it was the mayor. So they definitely showed up. Uh, another document I want to, you, you can close that one down. But I just want them to see, you know, you can find out what's going on in your community by building a rapport with health organizations. And we collaborate with those organizations. They support the Rochester Support Group. And in turn, we support them. If they're doing health fairs or anything, we go and we represent um, the foundation. Uh, they, in turn, come and support some of the things we're doing, whether it's the ed forms or whatever, they're there to support us as well through volunteering. Uh, so I'm gonna share screen again. Because I want you to see. Uh... Marilyn has a wonderful connection out in Rochester. She's, it, it's not just business. She's built relationships with right. almost everyone of influential need in her area. So here's the letter that went to the mayor, his office, telling them who I am. June is National Sturgeon Awareness Month, the date, uh, what the date is all about. We acknowledge and uh, to acknowledge this occasion, Rochester City Hall and surrounding buildings will be lit in teal in honor of square demo warriors in our community and across the world. Uh, during this event, we will also be acknowledging individuals who are silently working to affect change in the Rochester community by focusing on health and education. This year, our community is pleased to announce that we will be recognizing you, meaning the mayor, and your administration for the work you've done in collaboration with community organizations to improve health equities in our community. Uh, let's see. We tell them when, what time. Uh, there's going to be a, a ceremony, of course, and the lighting and photos and so on. And we, you know, just let him know we hope that he's going to be able to um, be a part of it. His staff got back to me and said, yep, he'll be there. And as a result, you saw the pictures. I'm going to stop sharing there. And there's one last one. Uh, so this is what goes out to the community. Uh, Eva and Karen, they all mentioned about the press release. I don't know what the press release is going to be this year, but uh, this is something that went out last year and it highlighted again, you know, uh, each year Rochester city officials helped the Greater Rochester Scleroderma Support Group to acknowledge World Scleroderma Awareness Day by lighting Rochester City Hall and surrounding buildings. They tell you where, time, uh, group photos, and so on. And it tells you who we're going to be recognizing. Uh, it also tells you about what scleroderma is, the National Scleroderma Foundation, the Rochester Support Group, and the contact. Um, 
Like I said, now, Mary, we... were these just for proclamations or just for light ups or both? They were for both because I had mm -hmm. already received, I had already picked up the, the proclamation from City Hall. And okay. um, Diane Reynolds read the proclamation doing it. So it's a full event. This, this okay. is not just recognizing him and lighting it, but we have, you know, a full ceremony where we acknowledge, we have a moment of silence for the members. We have someone speak or one of the patients tell the group how many people are there. They tell them about their scleroderma journey. So it's a full event. Okay, and, um, great. Yeah. So any questions? I don't have a question. I just wanted to, um, one thing that a lot of patients and support group members here in Ohio or lower Great Lakes um, have found to be helpful is that they sit through the entire meeting of the county commissioners of the entire, you know, don't just, I got my proclamation, I'm out the door, you know, don't jet stay yeah, yeah. show, yeah. show them yeah. the, the respect that they're showing you and right. that has been amazing yeah well in this case it's actually a special event set up yeah. around the scleroderma the rochester scleroderma support group and you are inviting our patients in so they get a heads up and invite them and yes we do encourage them to wear their their shirts because sometimes the walk is already taking place so we ask them to wear their walk t-shirts and that's in the press release as well because it's going out to some of everybody um one of the things that i i like the idea about science because what we've had in the past is the actual table skirt well now we don't have a table skirt yet and it doesn't have a new logo so um yeah julio i'll be giving you a call <laughs> <laughs> You know, Marilyn, this is a this is a great idea. I really like this because we did uh, our county commissioners presented us with a proclamation last year, and we did stay for the whole ceremony. Mm -hmm. But we also had last year we had county commissioners come to our walk. We had local mm -hmm. judges that are very influential here in Bear County come to our walk. So this I haven't reached out to the mayor. So this is a great idea to reach out to the press and actually have a ceremony to mm -hmm. acknowledge these that support us through our walks and whatever uh, mm -hmm. activities that we're involved in. City of San Antonio has a health uh, go green uh, uh, program called Seclovia. And we got invited to that again this year. So that's a great opportunity to honor the YMCA here in Bear County for the invitation of coming out and sharing awareness. Right. So this is good. I like this. This is really good. Really yeah. good information, if, you guys. If you can, get your county legislators or whoever to help kick up your walk. For yes. Last year, we celebrated our 30th anniversary. And um, Assemblyman Jensen uh, helped kick it off. But prior to that, we've always had one of our local senators, Senator uh, Robach, for years kicked off the Rochester walk. And we have, we invite them all to the walk. Some of them come and some of them don't. It's based on their schedule. So the key here is to build a rapport with people in your community. You know, the saying goes, if you support me, I will support you. And we mm -hmm. invite them to our ed forms, our walks and whatever else we're doing. Even if they can't come, they get the information. So, and so when you ask somebody, well, I do you know anything about the Rochester Scleroderma Support Group? Well, you heard, heard of Scleroderma? Oh yeah, that, that's the one with that group that does the walk or they do ed form. So they know, even if they don't, they can't explain exactly what Scleroderma is, they can tell you who we are, at least. So, so when you request, it. so when you request a proclamation, you could also put a paragraph, we would like to invite you to whatever the event is. Uh, if you go to certain websites, so like, the mayor of New York City, uh, he actually has a special link that says invite the mayor at the mayor's office. So like I submitted it in January before even a proclamation request was sent out because big cities need longer amounts of time to do. Um, uh, of course, it, all of us talking and informative information, I just want to say one thing, which was my biggest mistake when I got really into doing these proclamations and light ups 
do not get discouraged. Uh, you will not get a yes for every building. You may not ever hear back from your politician, but do not give up. Stay on it. Eventually, they're going to see that piece of paper come by and say, oh my gosh, this one's so annoying. This is like the fifth <laughs> year. Let's just do it. So I'm on the third year of asking, well, fourth year of asking my governor to acknowledge us. And I'm not giving up. Soon I'm going to stalk her at Albany. I don't know what else I'm going to do, but <laughs> don't give up. Do not yeah. get discouraged. Certain buildings will only support their cause. Like Madison Square Garden will never be lit teal. Why? They they support the children, be the, the children cause. So um, another thing I need to uh, share is we share June with the LGBT community yeah. for Pride Month. So if it's a big, mm -hmm. crazy city that really is lit up rainbow all month, get those letters and forms out earlier, the better. I start the beginning of January, and I actually got in some requests this year that the date wasn't taken for Pride Month. So um, keep that in mind, but that's all I have to say about it. Yeah. Do not get, I, I get discouraged. Keep going. Yeah. One more thing for those of you who want to invite your legislators, if they can't come in your letter, ask for them to send a representative, because yeah. I guarantee you, they always like to be highlighted in their own news um, websites that they're, mm -hmm. they're really working in the community and they want to be visible. So if the mayor can't come, ask for his, you know, somebody representing in his office. Uh, one year we even had our, our um, director of, what do they call it, health, director of health for the city of Rochester. The person came, we gave them their award for the work that they're doing, but that person also came and kicked off the wall. It works. So like I said, build a rapport with your community. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add to that before we move on? Okay, Karen, you want to bring it back up the slide? Sure. So what's left? What's left? Um, so um, any questions, share your success stories, any tips? Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for sharing. Um, is there anything else anybody wanted to, to share before we um, wrap up? <laughs> Marilyn's like, I just taught all of this. I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, but the thing is, I, I'm, I'm appreciating this, but just FYI, we've been doing this for years in Rochester. Yeah. So, I, but I, I always want to attend to learn something new, you know, in the way of the forms or anything, make sure that I'm on point with, with what I'm sending out. So, yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Marilyn, would you mind sending me the um, the press release you used um, for the mayor? Sure. So um, so we're going to get some of the examples that you had shown? Yes, absolutely. Um, so um, I'll be sending out the PowerPoint and the PowerPoint has clickable links to all the okay. Google Forms that, I've, uh, that we've all created. Um, and then I'll also send out the meeting recording. Um, okay. And then of course, any questions after that, feel free to reach out to myself, okay. Eva, anybody really. Everybody's always so going to help. So as a very much beginner of this yep. um what wh there's so much information here what should i kind of do first should i just um google the the uh, i live in missouri cape Girardeau, missouri it's a small town two hours south of st louis and and just find a form and fill that out and see where that goes i mean wh where do i start that's the i would question. i would suggest starting small maybe um speak to your um your town mayor and maybe light up your town gazebo teal and have signs around that. Um, it's easy to go right to the government webpage of your governor's office and copy and paste um, the, the history of the foundation. Um, so yeah, anybody else wanna share? <laughs> yeah, I, I would, so I, I would, the way we started was we looked at around Rochester and said, what can we light up? 
And uh, we figured to start with the biggest one, the, the mayor's, you know, city hall. Everybody comes to city hall. So what we found out when we approached them to light up city hall, they said, well, we don't just light up city hall. We can light up all downtown Rochester. So that eliminated us from going to building to building to building. So it's like, oh, really? The Rochester Library, you do that too? Yes. What else do you want? Well, whatever you got. <laughs> so they just <laughs> like it. We just send in the request and they just take care of it. And all we oh. do with the day okay. of is go and take the pictures of those buildings that are lit up. Okay. So, yeah. so you know, um, basically decide what you want to line up. One of the things I just thought about was uh, we have the Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony statue. Now, the city hall doesn't have anything to do with that. So that means we're going to go in, we're going to light up because that's part of our history here in Rochester. So that's one mm -hmm. more thing that we can, you know, uh, highlight. Okay, where do you hey. get these signs at or do you just uh, make them yourself? I made those myself. I used oh. cardboard, spray painted them teal and cut out all the letters, which mm. is kind of tough considering I have these kind they of- look good. But they look great. They came they out good. pretty good and I saved them and I've been using them for two years. I bring them to the walks. I bring them to, you know, uh, wherever I- I try to get people to take pictures with it. It's it's a topic of conversation. That's you can, one thing you can also, the signs, uh, we had uh, signs printed out this year with um, uh, information about scleroderma. They were like um, informative signs. Um, and we took those signs and we used those as well through our walks. And whenever we do things like this, we bring those signs with us. But like what um, Eva did here, if you know somebody that has a cricket machine, a family friend, they can help you make signs as well. <laughs> so that's a good way of getting signs, uh, you know, printed up. But uh, we went ahead and got into our budget and had some signs made for fun facts about scleroderma. And we use those throughout, you know, whatever gatherings we go to. So that that's a good idea, too. And if you have a big gathering somewhere, check out with your chair or your ED to get a, a national sign to bring along with you, um, whatever at the event or or the uh, walk or where, wherever the event is, or when you go for your lightings, I carry mine on the subway along with all the signs and I chuck it out and where we wait till the buildings start turning or news or our politicians show up or whatever. But Marilyn has her hands raised. Um, no, Travis first. Oh, go ahead, Travis. Oh, thanks. Um, so maybe for Verna, because it sounds like maybe she's in the, the spot today that I was in about a year ago when I jumped on a call like this and learned about proclamations and stuff like that for the very first time. I had no idea what it was. I didn't know what it was. And it was actually this meeting last year that that um, got me a little bit excited about proclamations. And so um, if you if you Google Verna State of Missouri proclamations, uh -huh. the first thing that pops up on there is going to be a link Hi. to a page that uh, has a has a blue button on there for Governor Michael L. Parson that uh -huh. says contact us to request a proclamation. So oh. if you if you do that, if you go to that site, there's a lot of information on there. And I think if it's if it's like the state of Montana, which I'm I'm from, or the state of Utah, which is part of our chapter as well, it'll kind of really help you navigate it. And so I okay. think last year it was really helpful for me to like just Google state of Montana proclamations have something actually come up to where it led me to a spot where I could fill out some information. The yeah. stuff that they're going to need is the stuff that national can provide the history okay. of the chapter and then the verbiage for the proclamation. And so I think if you go that to, to me, that would be a good starting point that would get you kind of comfortable um, figuring you. out what to do. Yep. Yep. Thank you. That's and the helpful. history information is on the uh, scleroderma.org website, just so that you don't have to wait on anybody. I'm not saying you guys are slow. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying. 
Yeah, until you get the PowerPoint, and then you could just copy and paste it off the PowerPoint. But there yeah. you go. Well, I'm sure that I will be calling, emailing, or something, somebody to say, okay, this is what I've done, and now I need help. So uh, okay, no problem. We're here. Well, that's okay. why we're all here. We'll we'll hold your hand uh, and, and get you through your your first. Uh, no, okay. And then once, okay. once that happens, you'll be like, oh my god, why didn't I try this years ago? <laughs> so easy. Mm -hmm. So two quick things for me, guys. Uh, number one, it's good to have brochures to hand out. You know, if you can get your hands on this, the um, scleroderma awareness, I mean, scleroderma brochures that tells you what scleroderma is, if you can get your hands on some, because we found that people want something in their hands to take away. No, by the way, I got a rid, rid of the, a lot of the bags last year, too, uh, from the walk bags. Had a lot of them left, so I gave them away. Um, the other thing is a uh, question for you guys. In the history part of um, the write-up that you have, is there anything in there about the artists? Oh, yes, that's in my press release. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we did was we asked them went online. We did a cut and paste and put it together, and we had the table with, you know, the uh, brochures and everything there, but we also had in the plastic sleeve uh, about the artist as well. Yeah. So anything you can do to, to dress up your table, if you're going to have an event, anything you can do that's scleroderma related, put it out there on the table because people will walk up and they will start asking questions. Uh, if you have um, business cards, of course, give them out as well. Oh, that's awesome. it. Yeah, Marilyn, I think you're referring to um, the artist, uh, Paul Klee. Um, exactly. He was a gifted, he was a gifted yeah. abstract artist who died of systemic yes, sclerosis yes, yes. In, on June 29th, 1940, uh, which yes. then is the day that now we dedicate to World Scleroderma. Right. Oh, Lucy, will put in the chat. Um, we were able to contact our electric companies and they were extremely helpful with what, oh, oh. That's a really good one. Yeah. With what buildings, bridges, et cetera, can be lit up. That's really cool. It might not work for everybody, and but it it's a good starting was point. Very helpful. Yeah. Resource. Absolutely. Worst case scenario is somebody else learns what scleroderma is. Right. It was also free. <laughs> well, that's always good. <laughs> Free's good. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for so much for sharing and, and joining today and um appreciate all, appreciate all of you being here on this Friday afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Thank Great. you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you everybody. Well, take care, everyone. Okay. Take care. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Oh, Eva okay. Marie. Yes. Can I contact you um after this meeting?